A poor loser managed to break the system and become a millionaire. He just sells land on the moon. Hey guys, there are quite a few people in our world who know how to impress with their creative and most importantly, non-standard thinking. What some people see as something out of reach and very far from us, others see as a good opportunity to realize themselves and even manage to make a fortune on it. So what are we actually talking about? Do you know who, for example, the Moon or Mars belongs to? According to the official treaty, which was signed by the United States of America, Great Britain, and the Soviet Union back on January 27, 1967, no country in the world can appropriate any of the Earth's satellites. It seems to be taboo, and all the countries of the world fulfill the terms of the treaty. But as you understand, it is not that simple. There was one person who decided not only to pull a joke on the system, but also to change everything radically. This is what our story will be about. Back in 1980, the most ordinary Californian named Dennis Hope experienced difficult times. Dennis was out of work, but it was not the only disappointment. Soon after, our hero abandoned by his wife, who sued almost all the property that Dennis had. As a result, Hope got serious debts and fell into depression. He lived in a small rented house and often asked to spend the night with friends and his own brother. Then it seemed to him that his whole life is awful, and he didn't know how to get out of the hole from the money debt because interest on the loans was growing and all the property had been taken away. One day, Dennis took his brother's car and simply drove around the city without a destination. Having parked on one of the slopes, he was looking at the bright moon, and his mind was spinning around the thought of how to live on. He even thought that it would be good to run away to the moon. No one would find me there, not a single bank, he thought. And on the same day, a simple but really brilliant idea came to his mind. He just remembered his college professor, who tried to explain to his students about poverty rights as clearly as possible, for which he gave a lot of different examples. And Dennis remembered them well. For visualization, the professor often mentioned the 1967 agreement on space objects. Returning home, he thought about this until the next day. He went to the library, where he carefully studied this question. It was clearly written in black and white that the existing international treaty to date indicates the inability of any state and corporations to own the planets and stars, but the rights of individuals are not mentioned at all. He studied the documents very carefully and found that the contract says absolutely nothing about individuals and legal entities. And as you know, what is not prohibited is allowed. That's what Dennis thought. A couple of days later, the man properly executed the necessary property documents and submitted them to the U.S. Department of State, which is in charge of space issues. Of course, American officials, to put it mildly, were shocked and confused, because it was a strange request to privatize Mars and the Moon. They did not even know what to say to such an application, but there was no reason for the official refusal. Everything was legal, so they just put a stamp familiarized on paper. But if you think that the man stopped there, then you are very much mistaken. Dennis was able to take advantage of the gap in legislation, and simply declared himself the rightful owner of all objects of natural origin in space, except for the Sun and the Earth. He points out that in full accordance with the international laws, he takes ownership of the Moon and other planets of the solar system. On November 22, 1980, as required by international law, his declaration of ownership of such planets as Venus, Mars, Mercury, and the planet's satellite, the Moon. And while others thought that he was crazy, Dennis Hope became the first owner of these planets. But this was just the beginning. After that, on the advice of lawyers, he waited for three years and did not receive any objections during this time. No one simply did not take him seriously, so Dennis was happy. In the same year, the man founded a company that he named the Lunar Embassy and began his wild activity selling lands of planets that he owned quite legally. Perhaps it will seem strange, but only a couple of months later, the man had several dozens of clients, individuals as well as legal entities from different countries. The surface of the visible side of the moon and other planets was divided into sections, each of which has its own clear coordinates and registration numbers. The standard size of the lunar area is 40 hectares. Dennis created a registration database similar to our land cadaster. Each transaction was recorded at the headquarters of the U.S. Lunar Embassy and assigned a registration number. The sale of the land plot to several persons at the time was excluded along with the contract of sale. The owner of the land plot received a map of the planet's surface, with the plots marked on it, and a constitutional form confirming his right as a new citizen of an interplanetary republic, as well as the property certificate and lunar passport. Of course, when the company began to develop, the UN woke up and made an attempt to close Hope's shop by offering to rewrite the Moon Agreement. But the new agreement was signed by only a few countries. 
thus leaving Dennis the right to continue to consider himself the full owner of the moon and other planets. But the most interesting thing is that according to the law, such deals are absolutely legal, and their conclusion is confirmed by documents, and each such deal on the sale of the site is agreed with Hope personally. But this too, guys, is not all. Dennis officially cooperates with the US Space Research Institute because it is forbidden to study his private property without his knowledge. It would seem an absurd and funny situation, but what if I told you that Dennis's company has grown hundreds of times since then? Now he works in more than 100 countries of the world. The prices for such real estate are very reasonable. So any piece of the land on the moon, regardless of his location, costs only $19.99. If someone thinks that this whole story is just a ridiculous joke, they are wrong. Based on the registered transactions as of 2019, about 5 million people and 193 countries have already acquired such plots. And Dennis Hope was able to sell 242 million hectares of the moon surface. But who are all these people who buy the plots? Such real estate is quite a popular purchase among famous people, including more than 100 famous politicians, including former US presidents, as well as the heads of 2,000 large transcontinental corporations, 25 astronauts from Europe and 40 American astronauts, more than 500 stars of world sport and cinema, even in Russia, the plot is owned by over 10,000 people. At the moment, Danny is busy creating and proclaiming the Moon Republic, as well as its promotion in the UN. To become a citizen of the Moon, you just need to buy a plot and get the documents. Dennis Hope himself is very proud of his business, but emits some small annoying moments. Of course, nowhere in the world anything happens without discontent. We have had 73 returns since 1980, but we always make concessions to our customers. The man is quite the rightful owner of certain planets of the solar system, because it is impossible to prove the opposite for today. And this right cannot actually challenge any of the courts on the planet Earth, because there is no jurisdiction in Earth law to resolve such issues. His example once again proves that everything brilliant is really simple. You just need to have brains and a huge desire to earn a lot of money. And there are plenty of ideas in this world. Would you be able to come up with something on this scale? Write your opinion in the comments below. And also give this video a like, and we'll see you soon.